Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 32 of the Breakthrough Active Podcast. As always, I'm here with Mitch. How are you? Good afternoon, mate. I'm doing very well. Friday afternoon, beautiful weather. Had a big week in the gym, training lots of people. It's been fantastic. How are you doing? With the new ski ergs? Yep, new ski ergs got all put in on Wednesday and got tested out yesterday in the workout with a bit of a uh, mixed review on how people liked them. Some people took to them very well and other people didn't uh, didn't like them too much and weren't as fond of them. But all in due time, they'll start to get a little bit better at it and have a bit more of a love-hate relationship, I feel. Well, I hadn't skied for about maybe six months, 12 months when I was at your house. And I oh, did... Yeah. I did the 40 calories with one of the guys yesterday and I was absolutely ruined. I was bugging. <laughs> Just yeah. too stimulus. Yeah, it very much is. And it's not really like any other movement that you do. Like if you jump on the bike, obviously most people know how to ride a bike or, or have ridden a bike recently. But yeah, that skiing machine, it's, it's very foreign. And, and I still remember back when I got mine back in 2017, I think it was, it took me a good few months to really get get the hang of it and change technique a little bit and found the right way to do it but like the same way that you know i'm you know we spoke about with people on the bikes when they first started they found it very challenging at the beginning and then you get a bit of a rhythm and start to get better at it the more you do it i agree today's topic is knowledge versus application Mm. this is something that we both really truly believe in and i guess we both disagree with the majority of the world that in 2020 today right now knowledge is not power an old saying knowledge is power no it's not do you want to elaborate on that yeah well it, it depends obviously what you what you're referring to but for us here today we're going to be talking about how it is for fitness and, and mainly nutrition and that's what we're going to discuss in, in much more detail here upcoming but we find that and what we've just been chatting about before we hopped on on the air here, we feel as though that people are always researching and always looking for for something that is the secret or it is the the one thing that is going to improve their nutrition or you know improve their consistency with training or whatever it may be. And the reality is there is no one thing. And I think sometimes you can look too far down that rabbit hole when you can look right at the top of that rabbit hole and that's where the answer is so we, we want to give a few real life examples of you know things that people maybe do feel as though they they research a lot or feel like they may need some more knowledge on when really getting back to basics and getting back to fundamentals is, is going to best serve you most of the time yeah well a great example i actually got asked the other day uh what should i have immediately after i work out now if that person was to go online and acquire that knowledge, they'd probably read that they need to have about 20 to 30 grams of high glycemic carbohydrates mixed in with some whey protein. Now, those high glycemic carbohydrates will help transport those amino acids into your muscles faster to promote immediate recovery for that post-workout anabolic experience. You know, yeah, in the in the anabolic window, which is sixty minutes, and then sixty one minutes onwards, it's pretty much useless. Correct. That will, and yeah. that is the perfect answer that you need the most amount of knowledge. But the answer for this person who asked is, you just need to work out more. Like increasing your workouts from two to four per week, and increasing the intensity via having more weights or maybe improving your technique or a better mind muscle connection with your body is going to get you drastically better results than taking advantage of that post anabolic workout window. And I know we sound like broken records and we consistently say this, but consistency is everything. Well, in in regards to that question, even if you keep it within nutrition, you know, if someone does ask, what should I have after my workout? And obviously what you just mentioned is the correct scientific answer that will be the best way to fuel your body after a workout. But if someone were to ask me that, I, I would probably mention it's a handy to have a protein shake after your workout. But it is also important to address what your overall nutrition looks like. Because if you have that protein shake with some carbohydrates after your workout, but then you have Chinese for lunch and go on a bender for the next two days, then it's, it's not important. 
And not to say that people are going to be doing that, but we find if if you do have a good diet, which is decent, has a decent enough amount of protein, you eat a lot of fresh food, you know, you don't overeat and you stay hydrated and you stay consistent, then it, the the amount of importance that is needed for what you're having after your workout is minimal. And, and if we were training uh, a group of elite athletes or an elite sports team or something, it, it would be different. And that's no offense to, to any of our members, but for, for the most part, you know, we, we need to look at things as a whole, as opposed to trying to pick apart small segments of the nutrition and trying to improve that. Now, I'm, I'm sure you remember this. Uh, Wednesday night on the Central Coast, it was uni night at our favorite establishment, the Woodport Inn. It's a nice place. It, it, it is, is very nice. It, it is the King Street Hotel of the Central Coast. Now, we'd go to the gym on Wednesday night, good intentions. We're, we're not going out, we're doing the right thing this week. We go with our dear friend, Jared, who I'm going to tag in this story on Instagram. We get there, we do about 15 (laughs) chin-ups. We get bored, we get overly excited. There'd be a few Facebook posts about Woodport. We'd race from Woodport as fast as we could. Sorry, race from the gym to Woodport as fast as we could. Bottle of vodka in the car. And Jared, before he'd get in the car, he'd have his anabolic injection shake from ASN, which did contain... That, that protein and carbohydrates that you need. Now, what's what's for, what's better for Jared to actually finish the workout, not drink alcohol, and go to bed, or to take advantage of that anabolic window after his fifteen lousy chin-ups? <laughs> That's an extreme example, but that that is the, that is the principle of of what it's like. If someone is worried about their post-workout nutrition, but the rest of their day, like I mentioned, they're eating crap or they're under eating or they're, they're overindulging in fast food or you know, going out drinking, you know, in the afternoon, then it's just not important. So there, there are other, obviously examples of this. It's not just all about what you have, you know, after you work out, but it's, it's, we want to use that as a bit of a, an example and, and something that we feel like a lot of people may be wondering. And we feel like that nutrition is something we get asked about so often and and there are little intricacies within people's nutrition like that that people are very curious about because there is so much different information online about it and the answer is always the same that that yes that might be a one percent out of the hundred percent that your nutrition is but 90 percent of your nutrition comes from just doing the basics not eating too much shit eating enough protein drinking water eating fruit eating vegetables and being consistent with that as often as you can. Yeah, a great one would be like, how do I lose this part of my arm? How do I work on this part of my arm? And the correct answer would be to focus on tricep work. But even then, the, the, over, the overwhelming factor would be, do you have a low enough body fat percentage to lose that body fat in your tricep? Everyone has that bit, 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 bit of body fat right there. So the answer isn't to do special tricep extensions, whether that's overhead, kickbacks, push-ups, triangle push-ups. The answer would be just consistently train more and consistently eat a healthier diet. And as your body fat starts to reduce, you will start to lose body fat there. But even then, like that's, that's probably the last place your body will lose body fat. And then I'll ask you the question, is that actually important to you? And is that willing, <laughs> is that little bit of body fat, I guess, is that that important to you that you sacrifice other aspects of your life, like enjoying this weekend. What are some of the what are some of the other nutrition questions that, that we have gotten? I mean, obviously we've gotten a lot over the years, but what are the ones that stand out to you that may be similar to to those sort of specifics in terms of like post workout nutrition? Well, a great one is white potato and sweet potato. Right, yeah. everyone will ask you what, what potato is better. Same yeah. as rice. That's kind of rice. white yeah. rice, brown rice, yeah. jasmine rice, you know, and whatever. Any single person listening knows that I have a huge affinity for potato gems <laughs> in the air fryer with chicken salt. Now, is that, I guess the answer to be what would the best potato would be? It's probably sweet potato, boiled, with maybe a little bit of cinnamon to enhance that really important insulin sensitivity. But the answer is like, what potato do you enjoy? What fits in with your meal plan? And what is going to help you be more consistent in the future? Because if I get home after a long day of running sessions and I've got a certain amount of, even if it's sweet potato fries or any other white potato, and I have that potato, 
Or I have to go to the trouble of peeling my sweet potato, boiling it and spending the half an hour doing that. I know personally, I'm far more likely to go off plan if I've got to peel, cut, boil my sweet potato. It's just, I, I agree. It, it's also something that I've heard over the years where saying that heating up food in the microwave is bad. Yeah, that, yeah, because of the B, B, BPA or whatever it's called. The BPA? And, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure, but there is like a, there has been studies done that when you heat up food in the microwave, for, for stars, apparently it loses a lot of its nutrients. And also it's just chemically not, not the same food that you, that you have when it's, when it's done in the fry pan or whatever. And all that may be so, but for me, in terms of I heat up my food in the microwave because I, I get pre, pre-made meals, the convenience of that, which I can have to heat up in the microwave, outweighs any of that negative, any of those negative impacts that cooking your food in a, in a, in a fry pan or in the oven or whatever it may be. And if you dwell on those small things too much, all of a sudden I would be not getting those meals at all and I would be cooking everything fresh. And then I would be a couple of days away from saying, stuff this, I can't be bothered cooking tonight. I'm going to go get a pizza, which is conveniently 300 meters down the road from where I live. Yeah. So sometimes it, it isn't perfect. And if you were to, to really look into it, you could probably find a reason not to do it. But even for someone like myself who, you know, trains hard and trains well and trains consistently. I still don't think that's enough of a factor for me to want to change that. Well, even worse than this, the people that try and, I guess, are perfectionists, they also try and do it at the right time. A great example is last Christmas, December 25, I wake up, I'm in a great mood. We've had a good year, pre-pandemic, no COVID-19. I sit down to lunch. I'm enjoying a big bowl of potato gems. I grab my chicken salt. I start putting it on my gems. And then one of my family members, who may or may not be in the best shape, starts harassing me about how unhealthy that is for me and I shouldn't be eating that because I'm a trainer. Now, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't take that line, I didn't take that line down. For, 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 firstly, it's Christmas, so, so leave me alone. <laughs> Secondly, she was having a big pasta salad of cream, potato, the works, drinking soft drink, ice cream, the cake, and all that kind of stuff. Like, it's just... Obviously, I can do better than the gems, but it's Christmas Day, and it's just, it doesn't matter what, even if I didn't eat gems for the rest of the year, and it was just Christmas Day, it's one meal of the year, as opposed to I eat five times a day, or 1,500 times a year. Well, it's the same argument that people have when, when they see some people will, will comment when people are drinking Coke Zero or Diet Coke, and it'll be like, well, you know, that gives you cancer, right? because apparently there was some study years ago done that, that showed that it gives you cancer in the brain or, or, or something. And, and sometimes you just have to pick your battles as well. Like, yes, I mean, and you, you love your, your Pepsi Max and your, your Coke Zero. I do. You are better off drinking water than you are Pepsi Max. Like, there's <laughs> no one in the world can, can argue that. I can do one better than that, mate. Put lemon in your water. Fresh lemon every single time you drink water. That's, Otherwise, that's it's not aligned enough. That's bad for your teeth, though. Is it? Oh, well, no. What, yeah. so, so what we have to do, then, we have to drink water 100% of the time, squeeze lemon in it, and then drink it through a straw, making sure it doesn't hit any of your teeth, if we're going to have the perfect beverage. That's when yeah. knowledge, knowledge does not matter. It, it doesn't, if you're a brain surgeon, it matters. Well, you, that, that's what I said earlier on. That there, is, there are some things where it definitely does matter, obviously. But for what we're talking about with nutrition, and, and for people who are... Just looking to, to get healthier, build some muscle, lose some body fat. You know, we're not talking about people with chronic diseases and all sorts of things because obviously they have a very set type of nutrition they need to follow. But you can, you can look too much into things. And if you look too much into everything, you'll find that everything's bad for you. <laughs> and, and sometimes, you know, Jamie and I have discussed different things in the past and, and he'll, he will have just listened to a podcast or research something. And I actually say, listen, mate, I, I don't want to know it because I already know enough. And I already know that if I know any more, then it's probably going to be proving that something I do isn't right. And I think, like you said, I'm, I'm not by any means a, an absolute elite sportsman or someone that, that earns my money from, from being an athlete. So I, I can be a little more flexible with those sorts of things, as can all of you guys listening. So if, if you are able to do 
90% of those things, and like I said, there are going to be maybe 10 one percenters that you can change, i.e. maybe drinking lemon water, i.e. maybe having the protein shake after your, your workout, i.e. maybe cooking your fruit, food fresh as opposed to heating it up in the microwave. That is, those three things are 1% of your nutrition. So for us, our mentality and our, our whole idea with nutrition is to try to simplify things. And if you're able to do 90% of your things correctly most of the time, then you're gonna, it's going to better serve you. Because if you worry too much about the 1%ers, all of a sudden you're doing the 1%ers and you've forgotten about the 90%. Yeah, and a great example is you can do all the 1%ers for the entire week if you have a huge weekend on the piss and an awful Sunday, it's reversed and, and you've probably gone backwards. And more importantly, then you feel awful about yourself for doing that. That's the other thing too. I saw a great quote the other day. It was, um, what was it? It was like perfection in itself is self-destructive due to the fact that it's not attainable. And then when you don't attain the unattainable, you feel guilty about it. That's a good quote. Yeah. You, me- you remembered it well. Yeah, I did. <laughs> And, um, but it's true. You, you, you can be a perfectionist who is seeking perfection in certain aspects. But I feel like, especially when it comes to, to new, your nutrition, if you are focusing too much on these little minuscule parts of your nutrition, it's just, you're just not going to get the benefit out of it you want. Like, no. sh- should we be adding cinnamon to our sweet potato or our protein shakes or our oatmeal because it, it has some fat burning properties to it? Probably, but that, that's not even a 1%. That, that's a quarter of a percent. The other problem is people would actually get cinnamon sugar. <laughs> well, that too. Yeah, yeah. and they make a mistake. And, Jane, and, and referring to Jamie's argument earlier, like, yes, if you enjoy cinnamon, you should add it. But if, you, if you're having your oatmeal and all of a sudden you add cinnamon and you don't enjoy it anymore, then you shouldn't be having it because it is such a small part of your nutrition that it's just not worth it. You, you're more likely to stop eating that oatmeal because you don't enjoy it anymore and start having an egg and bacon McMuffin on the way to work instead. So we, we are very much about picking your battles and, and that's why we feel like being a little more streamlined with our research because you, the, the, the internet's a wild place. You, you can get on tangents and all of a sudden you're watching videos and reading, reading studies and reading pages about all this sort of outlandish stuff, but which might have some research to back it up and some science to back it up but for 99.99 percent of people it just doesn't matter and isn't important and even with um picking your battles is a great example so if i'm going through a fat loss phase or i'm trying to lose some body fat and i'm in a calorie deficit i will start drinking coffee now coffee isn't the best thing for you in the world it would increase cortisol which is a stress hormone but for me, it is a really, really great appetite suppressant. So if I was to have the exact same diet, no coffee, I'm better off. But if I was to go on that diet and then, I don't like the word diet, if I was to follow that nutrition plan, that coffee really helps me out. So once again, it's, it really is about picking your battles and there is no need to be perfection. A lot of personal trainers try and do that. They'll do like course after course after course after course after course after course. And they'll know every single thing there is to know about the body, biomechanics, nutrition, everything. But they, they forget how to communicate with people. And all that knowledge without that key fundamental of learning how to communicate with people, it, it, it just it doesn't matter. And the other thing too is if you can't explain it to, to the average person, then what's the point of knowing it? Well, I think, I think in regards to your first example there that you said about coffee, you, you have weighed, off, weighed up the, the trade-off of that. Yeah. So if, if you were taking up something that was equally, that w- was, was very unhealthy to the point where it wasn't worth you having it because that was being counterproductive to your health, then you wouldn't do it. No. But you, you've made that decision that the drinking coffee, yes, it might, you know, you're better off not having it, but having a little bit of coffee, even if it is, potentially considered slightly unhealthy in, in all the impacts it has, then it is still worth you doing it because at the other end of the spectrum, you are less likely to be overeating your, your calorie amount each day. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's always important to remember as well. If, if you're replacing 
if you're if you're trading something for something that's worth, then that's when it's not worth it. As it comes to knowledge and everything like that, I mean, I, I think there are people that just they they go to uni and do degree after degree, and they're just people who like learning. But uh, you know, for, for me at least, I I feel as though I want to be learning something that I can apply. And as it comes to to our our role and everything, that there, there are a lot of things that we could study that that would be correct, but we wouldn't be able to apply it to what we do at work. So I choose not to. Yeah, and I, I guess I lost my train of thought. Well, that's that. my point was that's the whole application versus knowledge bit. Yeah. Because you might have the knowledge, but are you able to apply it? And, and there's sometimes that, again, we'll have conversations and you will have seen certain exercises or certain things on Instagram. And I said, well, how are we going to do that in the session? We don't have that equipment. <laughs> yeah. It would be like it would be like me going and doing a, a course on the benefits of using the GHD sit-up machine. We can't use it. We only have one of them and they cost <laughs> for a thousand dollars each. So we're not about to go out and buy ten of them. So I choose not to bother learning about that because I aren't I'm not able to apply that. So I, I think it's always important that you you're only researching and you're only learning things that you, you want to apply. And, if we and did feeling that, like you can apply. If we did do that, we'd have to call ourselves GHD active. Because there'd be no room in the gym. Well, exactly, yeah. That, exactly. It's the yeah. same with like battle ropes and things. Like, like battle ropes are great pieces of equipment and, and you can do battle rope courses, but they take up so much bloody room and how, how, how are we able to fit, fit all them in the gym? So again, I choose not to learn about that because I'm not able to apply it. And if I've done nutrition coaching with anyone listening, I always talk about making a good deal. And you mentioned it before in regards to my trade-off with coffee. For me, choosing that coffee is a phenomenal deal because it really suppresses my appetite throughout the day, which enables me to, I guess, stay um, in line with my current food plan. And that goes from like, you're not going to make the perfect deal every the perfect transaction every decision you make but if they're 90 percent good and then the trade-off outweighs the negative i guess the positive outweighs the negative that's when you see the results and we discussed this with tony k 20 episodes ago in like uh, it was, he said he said it perfectly much better than i'm going to say it it was like you are what you live and the other thing too is you have these really knowledgeable people about nutrition that are really overweight so then the question is do you really know about nutrition or is that person trying to be perfect, but then I guess doesn't nail the basics? Yeah, when it comes to nutrition, I, I think, because I touched on this before with, with the convenience of, of um, the pre-made meals. And yes, they might not be you know, extremely healthy with heating them up, et cetera. But I think there, there's three components that food can, can fit into. It can be cheap, it can be convenient, or it can be, I guess, holistic, organic, and, and I guess good quality, you could say. But you can't have all three. You're not going to find something that's cheap, that's convenient, and is a whole food that has great quality. So therefore, you, you need to pick ones that are appropriate for you. And, and I feel as though for me, I lean towards the side of convenient because I know that if it's convenient to me, I'm more likely to do it. And you don't want it to cost you an arm and a leg. And I feel like the, the pre-made meals are, are very affordable. So I am probably lacking a little bit of quality within my food because I'm not getting all my stuff fresh. It's not you know, grass-fed beef that I'm eating. It's not fresh veggies all the time. So I feel like you, you can't tick all the boxes, but you need to work out what's best for you. If, if you're someone that, that really wants quality food more, then you're not going to get it cheap. Because if you're buying fresh food, grass fed, you know, not pre-made, then it's not going to be cheap and it's probably not going to be convenient. So you need to decide what is most important for you and what you're most likely to follow and then pursue that. And for me, convenience is always going to be number one because I feel as though I can do that over and over and over again when it is convenient to me and my lifestyle. And the opposite end of that spectrum is someone who chooses nothing but quality and perfection. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I think most people agree that you're in good shape. So maybe your lack of quality doesn't matter as much as because you're really consistent. We also have more time than most people too. 
So the busy mum with three kids is gonna drive to Harris Farm Market to grab all the, all the organic food and cook fresh five times a day around her kids, changing nappies, their sleep patterns, doctor's appointments, school appointments, then coming to sessions. It's just not going to happen. So that person over there is probably, more, might have more knowledge, it's more perfect, but they're nowhere near as consistent so their results will nowhere near be as good as yours. Yeah, and, and I agree with that. And, and obviously that example is right. But at the other end of the spectrum, you might have somebody who grows their own veggies or they get uh, fresh meat, grass-fed meat delivered. I, I know that is something you can do. So that is still convenient and picking your own vegetables is convenient, more convenient than going down to Coles. So it really just depends on, on what they are. But we feel as though most people could definitely use some more convenient nutrition choices within their life because most people that we have as part of our gyms are, are busy, that they have jobs. You know, obviously that a full-time job in itself is means you're busy. They, a lot of them have kids and have families and we know how much time that's going to take up. So convenience of making healthy food choices is right up there in terms of its importance because we've heard it over and over and over again. When, when you don't have food ready to be eaten at night time, the convenience isn't there. You go and get fast food instead. So you, yes, you might be giving up a little bit of that quality. But again, for, for most people, we find that having something convenient and having something affordable is going to be important. In regards to knowledge and I guess like application and just executing the plan, quite often I'll be working with someone who's done the nutrition challenge with me. They'll be six weeks in, they've lost four to six kilos, which is an awesome result. And they're constantly asking me, what's next? What do we do next? What's the next type of diet do we do? What phase are we going into? And the answer is always just stay the course. Not sexy, not exciting. Just stay the course. Like what you're doing is working. Just keep doing it. Just keep being consistent. And then people, once again, people are getting the results. They're doing really good. And they're still acquiring more knowledge or seeking more knowledge to see what is next. I think people are looking for the answer a lot. They're looking for something that that is going to appeal to them that they can do. And and if there was a, a secret or an answer, we'd all know it by now. And we don't have it. Mm -hmm. That's why you look around and you go down to Coles or you go anywhere and most people are overweight. And and that's because it, it, there isn't one thing you can do. It's just something that you have to do day in, day out. There are times when we, we veer off it and that's fine. And we just need to jump back on and be as consistent as we can. And that's why it's so important to be able to find something that is, that is suitable for you and find something that you can do over and over again. What's an example you can remember where you have, I guess, tried to acquire more knowledge, but it cost you your consistency or your execution or application? Um, probably back when I used to take supplements a lot more. Like I'd, I, I, I take protein powder sometimes now and, and I take creatine and that's it right now. It used to be that I would take fish oil and I would take a multivitamin and I would take BCAAs and I would have a post-workout shake and I would have carbohydrates in that shake and I had nighttime protein and it's just, it's too much. All, all of those things individually can help, but I was, I was looking for the answer and I thought, okay, if I do this and I do this and I do that, then that's going to help and that's going to help. But, but at that time in my life, I was also going out drinking once or twice a week. So I felt as though just that my, my thoughts were in the wrong place. Like I, I was focusing on the wrong things. I, I needed to get back to basics and just eat good food and probably just did supplements, which, which is what I've effectively done now. And I'm not, I'm not saying that supplements are, are good or bad. I think they do have their place. But for me, I was becoming reliant on them because I started reading more into it. Oh, the benefits of fish oil, this, this, and this. Okay, I'll take that. Wealthy vitamin, okay, I probably don't even eat enough vegetables. I'll take that. Oh, nighttime shake so my body can repair overnight. I'll take that. Always having a protein shaker with me. So I'd have, after a workout, having my BCAAs in my water because that promoted in recovery as well. Oh, I'll get that. And I had six or seven things I was doing every day. And 
I think if, if all other things were perfect, those things will definitely help. But for, for where I was then and even for where I am now, I, I don't feel as though they would serve me well enough. And I think that's because I was, I was looking for these things that would magically help. And you're in much worse shape back then because there was just so much, so much less consistency in your food in general, alcohol intake and sleep quality. Yeah, well, I would, I would eat, eat and sleep well probably four nights a week and the other three would be rubbish. Yeah. So uh, I can take as much BCAAs as I want. It's not gonna, it's not gonna change anything. So one that I did, this is ridiculous. I bought like 400 capsules of fish oil, good for omega-3s, good for, good for your brain. I think there's no one on earth that will dispute that fish oil is good for you. However, there's something better, krill oil. <laughs> Just That's krill right. Oil. Because yeah, krill oil absorbs, uh, has a higher absorption rate in your body. So I threw out my fish oil, <laughs> bought, some, <laughs> bought some krill oil, and I ended up taking neither because just like you, <laughs> three nights of the week, I was on another planet. <laughs> Not sleeping, well, drinking. Well, what were you, that was a few years ago when you were buying... Um, what I, I heard, yeah, yeah, I heard. Yeah, you're, <laughs> yeah. you're pissed off about that. Well, it was, it was exactly this conversation we're having now. Like, yeah. Well, at that point, I was trying to do something very particular, but then, like <laughs> berberine, it is. It's not even a one percent. It is a one. It is a ten thousandth percent. Whoever listening, do not go out and buy berberine. Well, I think with any supplement and any vitamin, whatever company produces it they are trying to sell the benefits of it and they, they do all have benefit, independent benefits, no doubt, but they also make it seem a lot more important than, than it really is. Yeah. Because on the back of that packet, it probably says should be taken in addition to a good diet <laughs> and, and regular exercise. So it's, it's almost like when those old ab swing and ab king pros used to be on TV. Like they, they, they are, they are great machine. You can, you can build some good core strength using those things. I'm serious. I'm yeah, not even, I mean, yeah. I good. Like I've used them before. They're hard. But yes. so, sorry, back to I heard what I was doing is for those uh, that buy supplements out there, don't get upset. All these supplement companies, the supplements you buy from supplement shops are really underdosed. So for example, it might be a supplement that would have uh, the benefits of magnesium which in the real world would be five, three to five grams of magnesium. And the supplements you buy on the shelves have about point, point 0.1. So like point, like point, if it's one gram of magnesium, it's point 0.1. So it would be what? Is that 10 grams? And then on the label, it has proprietary blend instead of yeah, actually so telling me how much is in it. I went to iHerb because then I was trying to make my own supplements to make sure that my supplements were dosed correctly, as opposed to buying those shitty micro dose supplements down at the shop. Mm. Your focus was not where it should have been. But I, I, you know, would, we, I would drink lots of vodka and lime and soda. But then after about 12 p.m. at 12 a.m., I didn't care anymore. I just get the vodka Red Bulls. <laughs> Needed the caffeine. All but right, so, yeah. we, 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 we might we might leave it leave it at that. But the, the whole the whole purpose of what we wanted to discuss here today was mainly as a as a, a test to to nutrition because we get we get asked every other week about, is this good? Is this food good? Is this good? And, and the answer is always the same. I mean, there is no good or bad food. There is no right or wrong thing to do, but you need to look at the bigger picture. And if you are asking about one of those one percenters, like is, is, is almond milk better than oat milk? It just doesn't, doesn't matter. I mean, so you, you need to look at the whole, the whole picture. And, and if it is one of these little things that, that is, you know, not that important in the whole scheme of your nutrition, then just do what you prefer. There is no point in trying to sacrifice something you like when it isn't that important. Yeah. And, and unless you've been training for five years and you've averaged five sessions a week and you sleep nine hours a night, drink enough water, stop trying to acquire more knowledge. Cause up until that point, you don't actually need to, cause I've been training for 12 years and I should never have bought berberine. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't need any more casein protein. No, not at all. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and we'll see you in the gym. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.